Very rarely do we get to have the insider scoop of what it's like for people to be friends and competitors. My name is Katrina Radke, and in this next interview, I interview three of our male backstrokers from the 1976 Olympic Games. Check it out. And I'm here today with three special men from the 1976 Olympics, Bob Jackson, Peter Rocca, and John Naver. Hey. And guess what? All three of these guys swam backstroke. So tell me, each of you, what you swam, and some, we're going to share some stories from the 76 Olympics. Bob, we'll start with you. Okay, I was in the 100 meter backstroke, placed sixth in the final. Um, had some uh, different stories about George Haynes. He was my coach. Huh? And uh, I remember warming up <laughs> for the final. Those are your and I'm sitting down at the wait, at the end of the pool waiting for him to come and give me a, a split. He's down there talking to Joe Bottom because Joe Bottom was one of his Santa Clara swimmers. Uh -huh. And he's completely ignoring me. So I'm down there just freezing. And by the time he finally got to me, I was just tightened up. And, and so I just got out and left. <laughs> <laughs> and, George just, just, and George just didn't even, it didn't even phase him. So. That's you, had to, you had to actually be one of his good swimmers. And, oh, right, and he did. But he did. But you were a great athlete. Here you're an Olympian, and that you're telling us is that story. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? But he, he didn't pay any George attention George was more to of a, a motivator. I mean, he was a great coach. Yeah, uh, a great, great coach. coach. But wonderful, wonderful motivator with uh, yeah. athletes. Yeah. Yes. So what I remember about George was that's what going on. Yeah. George, uh, before you, you'd be in, at Montreal in the pool doing um, 25 sprints, build-ups, you know, one to three, and uh, you do an easy one, and George would give you some time that was like so fast. <laughs> and it's like, ah, I'm feeling pretty good. And then you go, and then you go maybe a little harder, and it's five tenths faster, and you know you haven't gone any harder. <laughs> so, last one we go, and it's time that I've never done in my life, and I just pushed, didn't go that hard. George just rubber watching us. Yeah. So we can get all set. Do you remember that? Yeah. I don't, even think, all... I don't even think he was pushing the button. <laughs> <laughs> He did. He didn't know that we all knew, yeah. and that's what he did. But you know, still, he was positive and kept yeah. us going. So. He was almost everybody who swam for George loved George. He was just so likable, and everything was great. He was. Do you mind sharing real quickly? Because I know, I know, we all know who George Haynes is, but some young viewers might not know who he is. Do you mind sharing a little bit about sure. his history? Jo George Haynes, I think, is perhaps the the, the the classic great coach in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. He uh, created the Santa Clara Dynasty. He won 23 national championships or something, and, and he, he, he probably put 100 Olympic swimmers on various Olympic teams. He was head coach of four and, and coach on six U.S. Olympic teams, and uh, the Santa Clara Pool is named after him right now. Right. Just one of the greats, and he, he was assigned to the backstrokers and the IMers, yeah. and then uh, Gambrel was assigned to the sprinters in the distance, and... Yeah, the breast strokers, yeah. The breast strokers. So he was our coach, and we were rivals. We were, I mean, we were basically picked out of three different teams, put on the same U.S. squad, and then coach would make us race against each other and work out. And of course, we were all the best backstrokers of our own teams. Yes. Used to coasting to victory and workouts, and now we're clashing heads <laughs> yeah. the whole time. Well, yeah. I, I remember that you guys I told you a little bit about. It. We did three 100s near the end of training camp, and competition was pretty fierce, but they did keep us somewhat separate. We didn't do all the same sets, right. but then he'd bring us together. Three 100s, push off, descend one to three, and we all, and you, the very first one, and this is when the world record was 56, right? Was it yeah. The time yeah. The first one, John goes 59. I think we were like maybe 59 high minutes, yeah. and we're going, oh my God, and we're not, and we're supposed to descend them. Yeah. You remember what you did on the last one? You would, you were the fastest, so it's getting in everybody's heads, but at the same time, we're going faster than we've ever gone. I think we went 57 from, a push. The, from the push on the third one. 58s, and never have I gone, you know, never have I ever gone under a minute in practice. So I remember that. Very, uh, that intensity was amazing. I remember when a 59 would have won U.S. National. Yeah. And, then, and, and, and we were all firing on all cylinders. Every one of us, every workout was just. Yeah. And, and, and I remember the, the, the Doc Councilman story. The first night we were all on the same team, and there was the potential for rivalry and bitterness. And Doc Councilman says, guys, let me share with you my goal for this team. And he challenged us to win every race, to win more medals than the rest of the U.S. Olympic team, all other sports combined, and more medals in swimming than the rest of the world combined. 
And all of a sudden, it mattered to me how well Bob did, and it mattered to Peter how well, you know, and we just all came together. Yeah. So it sounds like he's a big visionary and making you guys great. Yeah. Well, Doc was. I mean, he was a six-time national champion at Indiana, and he yeah. developed spits. And and then he, uh, well, let's, let's, let's make that a part two. Thank you very much, Bob, right. Peter, Thank and you. John. You're welcome. Great stories great. to come.